from our conversation and from what I've read about you, all across the Midwest, branching now all the way to the East Coast, probably going to conquer that north and south from there, I would imagine. You know, so that is a, a feat. That is an accomplishment. That is something that, you know, so many people try to do, myself included. I mean, we do single family and multifamily. You're also in a space that I'm extremely interested in, but very few people have an opportunity to do that. You know, you, you look online and people are talking about do virtual wholesaling and buy this over here and do this over there. And they really kind of spitting in the wind trying to figure that kind of thing out. But you're actually doing it and on a grand scale. And if I may ask, how did all of this start for you? I mean, what's your background before you graduated from architectural school and college? But, but where'd you come from? What did that look like? I mean, what, what ignites you, man? <laughs> well, I think what, what uh, got, you know, what spurred me was my parents saying, uh, oh, what do you want to do next year when you graduate? And I thought we'd be working in the family business. And they said, no, nope, you're not going to do that. <laughs> you're, you're out, you're gone. And uh, I said, well, you know, what happened? What, what, what happened to the, you know, what, did I piss off grandpa or something? And they said, nope, we're, we're selling the family business. So that's what really spurred this direction of my career. Um, it was not something I was anticipating. I mean, it was fourth generation family business. And, you know, that's just uh, how, you know, life throws you a curveball and you either mm swing or you hit it right and sometimes you follow it off and either way you got to get back into the box and so my father is the one who said hey what would you think about doing architecture again you did in high school and that's where i learned that there was programs that i could have an undergraduate in history but then a master's in architecture that's a great place to start and you've done well for yourself <laughs> to, to say the least and for you what was the the skip what took you from being an architect and that being your desire and what you want to do to managing such a large portfolio in, in real estate. I mean, what, what was that progression? Well, that, that was still in, in graduate school. So um, my first semester was a general studio. And it was in that that I learned that architects really don't control projects as a developer. Hmm. And so my next professor I got hooked up with was a, a de, was an architect who also owned a development company and an architectural firm and a contracting company. And so he used the studio to further his actual projects. And so as a, as a graduate student, I was like, this is real life. This is what I want to do. So I better jump in wholeheartedly. There was undergraduates in our class and, you know, they, they were still 18 and wanting to have fun and all those sorts of things. But I, I viewed it as a job. I viewed it as a job interview and I was his TA. So the first project that I worked on with him in class was 50 acres and it started off as a thousand condominiums and it got whittled down to 316 condominiums, 64 townhomes and 16 single family homes. And because I was the only student who could read and write um, <laughs> proficiently because of my, my history background, um, he threw me on the development side. So, you know, I was developing this performa for, you know, 400 units and a hundred million dollars. And so, you know, working out all the financials and working on the, the loan docs, condominium docs, and all those sorts of things. That's a big yeah. project. Uh, most people don't, get, they, that's not where they start. You know, that's, that's not at all where most people start. Myself, I started literally at the bottom, right? And, and built. Well, believe me, I, I, I was at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's two different kind of bottoms though. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first day at work, I would show up and they're like, okay, go up and uh, empty out the uh, the stuffed trash chute in a, a seven-story building. And I'm yeah. like, can I go home and change? They're like, no, you got to go up there now. I mean, that's, believe me, I was at the bottom. <laughs> that's that's tough to do in hard-bottom shoes, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you, at some point, you wind up investing in distressed assets. What did that, because obviously we know in any value-add situation, there's the potential to make, you know, good money, have have a good life. And is that what your natural progression was? What led you? I mean, how did you get into the distressed assets? And what were those distressed assets? Well, keep in mind, I was working for a developer. So hmm. any, t any type of property that you're looking to change the program is undergoing a little bit of distress, if you will. So for instance, if you buy a single family home and you put a second story on it, it's distressed because it's not market value, right? You're 
it's below the potential of the market value and people aren't able to get as much money for it because it doesn't have what the potential of the property is. So when we use the word distress, people think of like foreclosure, they think of, you know, all those sorts of things. But distress is, just means that it's not utilizing the best potential of the property. So when the 0809 crash came, everything was distressed. I mean, mm. it was just like no one was lending. So you couldn't get loans on anything. So prior to that, we were taking underperforming properties and, you know, just not utilized and um, tearing them down and building new homes. Um, and so we were moving every two years as part of our, our family plan. And then we were when the market crashed, we couldn't do that as well as the other businesses that we were doing. And everyone was being pushed into multifamily because that's the only place where lenders were lending. But that's when I began looking at self storage. And that's how we moved from I sold off my multifamily portfolio and just began working on self storage um, around. We began in self storage in 13, but we sold it all off and focused in on it solely beginning in 18, 19. Mm, that's pretty cool. And I love your definition of what distressed property is, because I don't think that a lot of people look at it like that. It doesn't have to literally be falling in on itself but it's identifying the best use of that property at any given time. I think that's a better than good definition based on the definition that is acceptable, I would say, to the masses. That's the part that stood out for me, you know.